So we've made our sharpening system and today we're going to put it through its paces and sharpen this knackered old chisel. That sounds good. Stick around. So welcome back. Third part in how to sharpen your hand tools for the power woodworker. First episode, we got hold of a bench grinder and we set it up and put some decent stands on it. Second episode, we made the sharpening station itself and today we're going to put it through its paces. And we're going to look at a chisel. Next episode, we'll look at a plane blade, but today let's look at the most common woodworking tool, the chisel. Now, this particular chisel here is not the world's best chisel. It's a JCB. It's the sort of thing you're going to buy from your big box store. I think I got this from uh, b and uh, big box store here in the UK. And it's been abused. This is the one that sits inside the toolbox. It's lent out to neighbors or family friends if they want to borrow a chisel. And it's okay. It's not a fantastic blade. It's chrome vanadium blade, a 25 millimeter chisel. And if you can look at the end here, you can see the ends pretty much knackered. I've got this big dint in here. This is all jaggedy. The bevel has been hand sharpened a number of times and it's all over the place. And yeah, all in all, it's not the world's greatest quality chisel. So we're going to bring this today to the point where it takes a cut that's fine enough to cut through oak and is good enough for our hand tool refinement here inside the workshop. And it's probably the typical type of chisel you're going to have. So I'm going to start with a little bit of theory to talk through exactly what we're going to do and what we actually mean by sharp. Now, if you were to look at a blade, a blade would have a flat bottom and then it has an angle and then it has a top. There you go. Quite simply, the anatomy of a blade. And it doesn't matter whether that's a plain blade or it doesn't matter whether that's a chisel in our case. Now, when it comes out of the factory, this angle here, this initial angle is known as a primary bevel. And that primary bevel is typically 25 degrees. The bottom is usually not as flat as we would like, so we need to do some work to make that flat. And the point that we sharpen is actually that very, very end point, that very, very tip. That's where we're needing it to sharpen. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to take our chisel and we're going to put it into this status with a flat bottom on it and a 25 degree angle known as a primary bevel. Once we've done that, we'll come back and look at a bit more theory on the secondary bevel. Let's get that done. Now, I've not met a blade yet that hasn't come at that 25 degree. And if you look around YouTube, internet, all the sharpening systems, everybody talks about the 25. So my suspicion is that every blade comes at 25. And that's a good angle. And you can actually use 25 to do work. The accepted norm for an angle is 30 degrees. It tends to give you a longevity on the blade and the edge. And we'll look at the reasons for that shortly. But for now, I want to get rid of all these scratch marks, all these dings, these crap bevel here, and I want to take the entire thing back to a 25 degree angle. Now, there's a number of ways you can do that. If you remember, when we built our sharpening station, this particular diamond stone here is a coarse grit. It's about a 150 grit. It's actually called extra coarse. And I can come along and I can use a suitable honing guide. This is the Veritas Mark II. Set it up for an angle of 25 degrees and then come straight in and start to work that on my coarse stone. And it will indeed start to bring this down. And if I just crayon in the end of my blade, that black area there is where I want to come down to 25 degrees. And you can now see where that's cleaned off the ink, that little piece there, that is 25 degrees, the rest isn't. Now this chisel has been hand sharpened a number of times and this bevel here is actually near to 35 degrees, so 10 degrees different than this part here. So I would have to use that stone to take all that black ink away to give me that 25 degree bevel. And that's gonna take a long time on the stone, but you can do it. And I do know people who do actually do that. Great, good luck to them I say. 
Now, some sort of power tool, a grinder, is going to take us down a lot quicker. Now, when it comes to grinders, there's two types of grinders that you're going to have a look at. There's a dry grinder, this one is, and there's a wet grinder, such as the Tormek or equivalent type systems. The wet grinder has a nice reservoir of water here. It typically has a nice large diameter diamond stone on it that rotates very, very slowly. And that's going to get rid of any heat on your blade as you're using it, so you're not going to damage the blade but they come at a price point they are expensive and i personally sold my tarmac because i found the learning curve too steep i could never get this thing as square as i wanted to and i still had to come back to stones to refine the cutting edge where i wanted it to be so i use this and i find it a lot easier and quicker to get the square edge i'm looking for on that 25 degree primary bevel the downside of this is it heats up your tools. And if you're not careful, you can put enough heat in that blade where you damage the blade. It's no longer tempered. And you can actually get these things to glow red if you misuse them on a dry grinder. You can't do that on a wet grinder. And the minute you get to that point where you've got that blue hazing on the back, or God forbid it's cherry red due to heat, you've well knackered that chisel, the temper of the blade has gone and it will no longer hold a cutting edge for any significant length of time. The metal has become soft, it won't hold the edge. But if you're careful, you can get around that and you get around that by having a little bucket of water, you take a couple of passes, cool it, a couple of passes and cool it. And that way you can still get there pretty quickly and you don't damage the blade. Now my particular grinder comes with a small tray that's perfect for putting water in. Like so, and there's nothing special about that, it's just water from my tap. Nothing more complicated than that. Now the second thing I want to do is to guarantee the angle. And although we talk about a 25 degree angle, you've not got to be super accurate, but what you do need to be is consistent. Because think about that. If I've ground this to perfection on a 25 degree angle by setting up some sort of jig, and then I come along next time, and I've not got the same repeatable angle on my jig, then I could probably do this 26 or 24. Not a problem, but now I'm reworking the end of that tool all the time. And that's the difference between just touching up a tool to bring it back to sharpness and reworking the tool. We don't want to spend our life sharpening, we want to spend our life working with the tool. So I want repeatability, and that's why I invested in this Veritas grinder jig here. This works pretty well, you put it in a certain position, I can then raise and lower this plate here, lock it into place, and I can change the angle of this piece here. And once I've got that locked into place at a certain angle, that's it, it's locked into place, and I use it in that way forevermore. It then comes with a jig, which then holds my tool, which allows me to present the tool to the grinder so it's square, and then work that back consistently left and right, and therefore that's always going to give me that repeatable 25 degree angle on here. So before I jump into that, I've now got to set up this jig for 25 degrees. The Veritas angle comes with this rather simple angle finder, and this will give me four angles, a 20 degree angle, a 25 degree angle, a 35 degree angle, and a 30 degree angle here. And then it also has these two reference faces, and the idea goes, put the reference face on the jig and use that angle to set your jig overall. So I want to know where my chisel is going to contact the grinding stone by using this jig. So if I just put my chisel on the resting place there and flush the bottom up, I can see my chisel is actually the thickness of one of these increments, so that's pretty easy. And when I look at the jig that holds the chisel, the thickness of the jig is also one increment. So my jig, plus the blade is going to sit somewhere in the middle of that second increment, i.e. there. So that's what I want to make contact with on the grinder. This is my 25 degree angle, and although it's hollow on the back, it's still got those same increments marked on here. So we want to take this angle, this reference edge, and the midpoint here, to set our 25. So I start off by adjusting the distance of the jig and I just bring it up so it's close to but not touching the, the stone and I can lay the reference face onto the jig and I can adjust the angle of that plate until the midpoint of that second increment just touches the stone and that is going to be there. So that's it. So this is now locked in to 25 degree angle to that jig. I then come in with this part of the jig, and this is a piece 
that holds the blade. And you can see it's got a reference pin here. And with the edge of my blade on that reference pin and the front edge of my blade resting on the inside of that screw just there, that is now holding my blade at 90 degrees to the blade in this direction. And you can see I could have put this screw here and I could have put this pin here. I've put them in that center position just so the chisel lies somewhat center in the jig, a wider blade, and move this over. So we take this part of the jig and we rest it in this slot here. We insert our chisel, resting it on that screw and that alignment pin, and we advance that until it's making contact with the stone. Just pinch down a little bit on the outside screw, which pushes the blade in this direction into the other pin. And then clamp it all down nice and tight. And then just check yourself that you're still aligned to this pin here. And if you're really worried about it, just bring in a square and just make sure everything's lining up nice and square. Now on the jig, you've got another reference face, which is this one here. And you'll know you're at 25 degree when that reference face is running flat and smooth onto the jig. That gives you the 25 degree angle. Now when you drop this in, it can rock backwards and forwards. With your thumb and two middle fingers, you want to pinch the jig and then rest these two fingers onto the blade and slowly, lightly touch the wheel and move it backwards in two. Now you don't want to go too mad onto this one and this will also allow you to sense the temperature in the blade. Now if you're getting too warm, your fingers will start to burn. Take it off, dip it in the water for a couple of seconds, come back in and repeat it. I tend to slowly leverage this thing in and I'm going to keep moving backwards and forwards until the face is flush on that area there and then I'm good to go. Slowly ease it in. And backwards and forwards. Very light pressure. I can feel like getting warm. Gonna cool it. Light pressure. You can now start to see that it's re-establishing that primary bevel. Now because of the abuse this has had, you can see that it's working across the chisel. You can really see now where I've still got these black bits of ink left, but you can see it's really establishing the 25 degrees we want here at this edge. So I'm gonna to continue to work this chisel until I've got the 25 degree all the way across and all those jiggledy jaggledies of abuse are out of that chisel. Now what we end up with, all the black ink is now gone and I've got this 25 degree bevel off it and all those nasties have come out of the, of the end. We've not got a sharp blade on this yet, but that's not what I'm trying for. So the next job is I want to flatten off the back. And for that we come in with our coarse grit stone here. Don't be tempted to flatten this on the side of the, um, the grinder. This is not flat. And also it's quite tricky to actually bring this into a moving grinder. I have seen people who've lost the end of their fingers by trying that trick. So please don't do that. So we're going to come in to our coarse stone. I'm going to drop a little bit of lapping fluid on this. This is a lapping fluid. This one's made by Trend. It's one I tend to use. And what I find, it gives a bit of lubrication on the stone. It also looks after the stone by moving the uh, debris from the chisel away from the stone and just seems to make the entire job go a bit better. And all you're doing is rubbing this backwards and forwards on that stone. And what we're looking for are these scratch patterns here on the back. And I want those scratch patterns to go all the way up to the end of the chisel. So again, another good tip Just come in with a pen and you can actually see what your chisel is doing at that point. Just give a few light passes, don't go mad. And you can actually see where the black is. So I've obviously got a hollow here. I'm working well on this part of the chisel, 
this part of the chisel, this part of the chisel, I've got a hollow here and a hollow here. Now actually I don't care about those, all I care about is the very very end of this blade here and I'm actually reaching all the end of the blade so I'm in good shape. As long as the back of the chisel is flat and the front of the chisel is flat I'm going to get a sharp edge here. So I'm just going to finish that off and that's good enough. I'm now going to come in with the next grit up. Now what I'm looking to do here is to just take out the scratches we put on with this grit. It's just like sanding, coarse, medium, fine, super fine, etc. So I'm just going to replace the coarse scratch pattern with a medium scratch pattern. And you can see I'm beginning to get that nice little bit of a shine on the end there. You can see where the chisel is taking out those deep scratches. Again, don't care about this, I only care about the end. So you can now start to see I've got this pretty reasonably nice shiny piece here towards the end of the blade. It's all looking nice and flat right to the end. Now we've not used these strops before, so I just want to charge the strop with some honing compound. Now I'm not going to do circular motions on this piece because the blade will cut into the leather. So instead, I'm just going to pull this back. And those scratches are beginning to vanish now on the back, so it's looking pretty good. There we go. I'm now happy that I've got a flat enough back on that chisel but I can actually feel that now coming into sharpness. Now even though we've not finished off sharpening the primary bevel this is already going to take quite a nice cut but we're going to do some more work. So our blade is now flat on the bottom and it's got a 25 degree bevel. What I want to do now is to put a 30 degree bevel on it. What we don't do is to re-grind the entire surface because that would be stupid. But what I do is just take a first degree bevel right across the end there. And that's known as a second degree bevel. Primary bevel at 25, flatten the back, then put a secondary bevel on at 30 degrees across the end. That gives me quite a lot of meat behind that slope. It gives me an intercept of 30 degrees at the flat back and that bevel. And all I've got to do is to work the very, very tip of the chisel. This is sorted out. This is sorted out. Moving forward, whenever I sharpen this chisel, all I care about is that very, 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 very tip. And there's not a lot of metal there. So at that very, very tip, that intersection there of the flat back and the 25 degree, very, very small amount of metal to remove to give us a 30 degree bevel that we can then polish up through the grits. Now to make our 30 degree our secondary bevel I'm going to use the Veritas Mark II honing guide and this is it. It's a simple wheel. It's got a clamp here for holding a blade and it's got some reference marks on the top and it comes with an angle finder. Now this is a 25 millimeter chisel one inch and on here there's some inch markings one inch two inch and some increments. I align up my angle finder with the thickness of the chisel, which in our case is one inch. I can then select on three gauges. I've got an amber gauge, which is standard angles, a green gauge, which is back bevels, and a red gauge, which is high angles. We won't worry about the high angles and the back bevels today. On a chisel, it's gonna be a standard angle, and it's a standard angle of 30 degrees. So I select my standard angles on this top here. I've got it on the yellow number two. This little knurled cap unscrews and then I can just select the 30 degrees here, lock that in place and now that gives me a reference point here that gives me a 30 degree angle. Slide my chisel in, bevel side up and then just bring in the clamping bracket. And straight away I can see that's going to give me problems because that's not holding the chisel securely enough. 
And I think that's one of the problems that people, when they report back on this particular jig, I can't get things square. And if you're using that and your chisel was waggling around like a waggly round thing, of course it's not going to be square. But Veritas also have this replacement, which is designed to hold a chisel like this on its side rather than a top clamping. You undo this centre wheel. Take out the top. Drop the other top in. No harder than that. I use exactly the same angle finder, number two. Slide that on and line that up with what would be the one inch mark, which is roughly about there, and just nip that up. And then I can use the same angles. I've already set it for 30 degree on the yellow scale. Bring in my chisel, bevel side up, and use this knurl at the side to just close that in. Now I can take off the angle finder, and now my chisel is held nice and square in that device at that angle. Now this is no harder, coming into our blades, lightly resting the blade on the stone, put your thumbs on top of the blade at the back so they neatly fit on the side there, and two fingers resting on the blade, and now work it back in two. And I want to show you what's going on here, so I'm going to come in with our pen, I'm just going to colour in the end of the chisel so we can see what's happening. Now can you see what's happening here? It's catching the very, very end of the blade. It's, no, it's not catching this centre part, it's doing this very, very fine tip here on this end. And that's what we mean, and that is the secondary bevel that's 30 degree starting to appear. So I've not got to work this entire face, we know the back is flat, so I've just got to work that till it starts to create a burr. What we mean by a burr is a very, very fine piece of metal that starts to form across here. There's no guarantee that I was 100% square on this, so I'm going to work this on the core stone until I've got a little piece of metal folding over right across the back of the blade. And that's not too hard. You can now see we develop that secondary bevel all the way along. And on the back here, just from the oil on my finger, you can actually just see it. It's just there. Just there. It's got this very, very fine piece of metal that's folded over. And what that tells me is that I've now worked that front face enough where it's folded over the metal because it's so thin onto this flat back surface here. And once you've got that, you've finished on that grit. Now the reason I just remade it, because if you just snap that bear off, it damages the edge. Now what you want to do is just come into your stone at the edge, very simply, just rub that off there, like that. Excellent. Once you've got that one done, repeat the activity on the next grip. It's worthwhile just cleaning down the roller and the end of the blade before you get to the next grit. Otherwise you can take the filings from this stone and put them onto this stone and that will change the grit on this stone. Now you're repeating on this stone, the slightly higher grit, again until you can feel that burr. And you can now start to see that's getting a lot shinier on the very, very end there, and I've got the burr at the back. I just broke it off, so I'm going to remake it. I'm going to drop out my chisel, do a final flattening of that back to get rid of the last burr that I've made on that grit. And that's it. So we've now got a 25 primary bevel, we've got a 30 degree secondary bevel, we've got a back that's flat, and a chisel that's sharp enough to shave hairs.
I now want to take it a bit higher by using the two straps. I'm not going to use the gauge on this. So what you do, rest your chisel on your strop at the top, push it forward and you'll see just a very, very small amount of compound squeeze out. Once you're there, that's the angle. Brace it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On to the next one, find the angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I just quick clean up of the back. And you now have a chisel that started off really quite bad, but is now completely sharp. There's a few ways you can tell if it's sharp. The one that a lot of woodworkers use is can you shave with it? And you go into your arm and you just take some hairs. And that's shaving quite nicely. The other way, take a piece of paper and will it cut through paper? Yes. The way that I was always taught that saves the hairs on your arm and doesn't waste paper is run it down your nail, but don't go too mad. A blunt chisel, if you think about that edge there, when you put it onto your nail, will slide. It won't, there's no resistance, it will slide. A sharp chisel will try and dig in. So don't push too mad into your thumb, but you shouldn't be able to slide that down your nail. And if that's the case, that chisel is sharp. But the true test is, will it chisel? So this is just a piece of oak. And I'm just working a couple of chamfers across the end grain on this piece of oak. I think it's fair to say that if I can put these chamfers on end grain on oak, that is good enough for what we need it to do. Now that may have seemed like a lot of work to sharpen a bargain basement JCB chisel from my local big box store, but you've not got to go through that process every single time. I don't need to use the grinder to re-establish a 25 degree bevel because I've already got the primary bevel established. I don't need to go through the coarse stones upwards to flatten the back because the back is now already flattened. All I need to do is to continue to maintain that primary, that 30 degree secondary bevel. And if I do it frequently enough, I can do that on the strops. So in use, if I'm going through and, and I feel my thread will get a little bit blunt in use, Bring in my strops with a paste on it, find that angle as we did before, ten on that compound, ten on that compound, clean the back of the chisel up. And that's it, I'm back to work again with a chisel that's sharp enough to work cleanly against the grain on a piece of oak. So there you go, we've now taken a bargain basement chisel from a destroyed state to a fully working chisel that's good enough to make clean cuts in oak, which is more which is no more than we can ask of it. We did get some reports that the Veritas Mark II didn't cut square. Let's try that. And that's come out as square as you like. I can't see any daylight at all on that top edge. So I'm getting really, really good, really good square results on this jig and on the Veritas Mark II jig. So I'm gonna call that a success. All I've got to do now is to sharpen all my chisels to get them where they need to be. Next time I want to talk about planes and we'll look at plane blades. Very, very similar, but some subtle differences that are worth knowing about. So, hope you find this useful and I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter and we'll get these planes sharpened up. See you soon.